when you were a little baby. There's a million yous you could be. Hello, everyone. I'm Audrey Yap for Variety on with Kelly Marie Tran. We're going to be talking about Monsterland, this new show on Hulu. Kelly, thanks so much for hopping on with me. Let's talk about Monsterland. You play Lauren. Who is she? So she sort of changes throughout the episode. When we first meet Lauren, she's a young girl in high school and at 16, and then you meet her again when she's 26. She sort of changes through the episode, but she starts as this sort of, I don't know, as most people are in high school, like insecure and just really wants to be accepted and loved. She has a very, for lack of a better word, cool friend <laughs> uh, <laughs> named Elena, who sort of in Lauren's mind, it checks all these boxes about what it means to be desired and loved and accepted. I'm done. Done with what? This, you, bossing me around? Hiding in the closet so you can have sex with your stupid boyfriend. What was that like going back to that time period, you know, getting into the, the hair, the makeup, the clothes? Yeah, I mean, there wasn't really much makeup. The only makeup there was was like, oh, let's put some like pimples on your face. Um, I strangely don't feel that far away from that person. Um, I think it's funny because I can kind of pass for being really young and I don't wear makeup in my normal life. Like I only wear it when I'm working. So I, I strangely relate to that person. I think there is a, for me, there was like a very visceral, the second I put in my retainer, I was like, oh, oh yeah. I remember how much I just wanted to be loved at that age. I'm not doing that anymore. And I am definitely not going to a literal murder for us because you want to role play dead girls or scare me or whatever. I'll just go alone, I guess. What do you think it's about horror that makes it kind of primed to talk about those things? I think there is an element of fantasy in horror movies or things that cannot be explained that sort of takes you out enough of the human experience where you're not just feeling so much of the painful reality of it. The elements that are sort of magical, mystical, unexplained, those are the things that give me enough catharsis to keep watching when it's um, when it's such a painful human experience that we're sort of trying to explore. It kills me that Elena is gone. And I would do anything to bring her back, but Rebecca's happy tonight, so could we just- Well, Shy and I can do it. If you'd rather not. We can? Yeah, of course. No, thanks. Um, I'll do it. Lauren, at the end of your story, she makes a really bold decision. She basically decides to live her life for herself. She is going to continue living this life. First of all, such a powerful choice, but also a very complicated one. For her whole life, she wanted to be this other person who she like loved so deeply. They had a bit of a toxic relationship be honest but uh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> to live life for yourself is such a powerful statement and such a hard thing to do and i read it and i remember thinking wow i'm still trying to do that <laughs> you know um and it, it made me feel i think i'm getting emotional now thinking about it but the idea that we can empower ourselves and make those decisions um, and again, I think this, this version of this decision is complicated because there is some like negative connotation to it. Um, but it's something, a balance that I'm still trying to learn. And I think that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do it because exploring that idea of, of living for yourself in addition to, you know, acknowledging the privilege I have and like doing the things that I feel like I, that make me a good person, you know, like all those things, like sort of that balance is is really, really complicated. Rose Tico, John Chu actually said that he would direct a Disney Plus series about her. Is that something that you would do? Would I, I love John Chu, I think he's incredible. I don't think I've ever met him. I think we were at a conference together once and I was like too nervous to talk to him. <laughs> we have to change that, we have to make- I have, I have issues, I need help. <laughs> Um, but uh, I don't know. I think that 
I haven't really thought about that that much. It's definitely something that I, I feel like um, I would need to, all the pieces would kind of have to fit in the right place if that makes sense. Would um, you be open to it? Would you be open to it? Would I be open to it? I don't, I truly don't know. That feels like such a big question to me. Yeah. One that I don't think I have to answer unless I get a call from a specific person. <laughs> a specific person named John M. Chu? Okay. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. <laughs>